Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 15, brought to you by ServiceNow. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas. This is SiliconANGLE and Wookie Bond's theCUBE. Our footage and event coverage, we'll go out to the events to start to signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Jen Stroud, Senior Director and General Manager of the HR Applications within ServiceNow. A former customer, now General Manager. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, it's great okay, to be here. Okay, got the mm -hmm. ServiceNow shirt on, the yeah. jersey, the number, everything. That's right. you're, you're up. I'm so, official. How does <laughs> it feel? So give us a quick, you know, Dark side, there's always a dark side, but I won't say which one it is, because they always say with the VCs, you join the dark side when entrepreneurs join the VC ranks. But in this case, ServiceNow, pumping on all cylinders, it's like a well-oiled machine, like the a fast sailboat. side. Yeah. It's fast, <laughs> what's it like? Give us the perspective. It, it's been tremendous. I, I've been to two knowledge uh, bef uh, events before, but as a customer, very different perspective um, on this side, and it's been, it's been fabulous. Very fast, you move fast here, uh, you have to keep up, um, but it's been wonderful for me to engage with the partners and the customers here to see all the great things that customers are doing um, with the platform and with our product, and also understanding where they want to see us take the, the product going what's the, forward. What's the culture like at ServiceNow um, as a company? You're in there, obviously they're for profit. They yep. can generate revenue from customers, and they have a product, they bring it to the customers, they get paid for that. What's it like internally? What's the culture like? What's the people like? Uh, it's It's been uh, incredible to be a part of this culture, and a little, it, it wasn't what I expected. I knew it was going to be very fast paced, but um, coming in, and uh, being able to rely on everyone to make sure you're successful. Everybody is um, interested in everybody uh, being successful. Um, and I think that starts from Frank um, on down. Uh, he's created that culture. Yeah. And so uh, that's what it's about. Uh, everyone is steering in the same direction and uh, we're I've always said in Silicon Valley, you know, people, you know, the high flyers come, go, there's a lot of people coming in and out, but building a sustainable business is really hard. Yeah. So you got to give uh, props to Frank Slootman. Uh, talk about what you've learned. Obviously, HR managers are out there struggling. It's, it's in the press now. Small, medium-sized businesses, you see all kinds of stuff. Certainly in Silicon Valley, where I live, um, you know, lo uh, eight lawsuits coming from just not keeping your eye on the ball. Yeah. Little things like, yep. oh, someone was offended in a meeting. Boom, lawsuit. I've been discriminated against. So there's all kinds of stuff happening just by having shoddy HR our yeah. practices. So talk about what that means, why that's happening. Is it just because they're lazy or the, the games change, the technologies change? What's going on with in the HR application space? I think uh, some other people have said it, uh, and my colleague Eric Hemmer, who's a solution consultant, now leads the enterprise practice, said it. Um, HR is kind of a 10 to 15, well, uh, five to 10 years behind IT. They're finally understanding um, that you can't uh, manage with uh, spreadsheets and email anymore. And we're seeing it. I don't care the, the size of the organization or what their annual revenues are. There are many organizations struggling with the same thing. How do they, um, provide a better experience for their employees, and how do they do it in a, a consistent way? And so that's, uh, we're seeing it out there, yeah. um, the opportunities, large and small, with, with customers, so it's very consistent. Frank, so, Frank mentions the real-time piece. Um, what's your perspective on that? I mean, being real-time means servicing complaints and managing that? Oh, sorry, Dave, I know. That's okay. <laughs> yes, go. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's uh, you want to be able to uh, support your employees in a way that they're used to being supported, you know, and, and interacting uh, outside of work, right? And uh, young, especially the younger generation, they come in and they want to work with a company that um, understands how to how to do that, not you know managing through emails. And so uh, they want to come in with a hip company that you know gets it. So uh, ServiceNow is able to provide that type of experience. So for them. the state of technology in HR. Is, is, is changing quite dramatically. We were talking, I was talking earlier from the guys from KPMG. You know, PeopleSoft gets acquired by Oracle, it sets off this chain reaction, Taleo, success factors, Workday comes into the market space, and so the, the, the tech base is changing, and then all of a sudden the service now starts to play, and people are confused. People asked you yesterday, and yep. the analyst, me, well, are you competing with, with Workday? And of, of course, no, although, you know, but we've been asked eight or nine times already I'm the sure. past two days. And you'll continue to, to be asked. Yep. So, and then you said something just recently to John that 
you know, people, they can't you know, manage effectively with spreadsheets and the like. So there's a lot of confusion because there's a ton of technology that's been going into human mm -hmm. capital management for decades. There's some new cool cloud techs coming out, technologies, Workday's just you know, one example, success factors, many others. Uh, and, then, and, and then ServiceNow with service management tied to the HRP. So what's happening on the technology substrate? How would you describe the changes that are going on? Uh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, they're the, Companies are understanding um, very quickly, and you look at um, uh, companies that have done results from their 2014 surveys of large leading uh, HR organizations. They understand that they have to to change and to leverage SaaS technology um, in order to be able to to keep up. So you, like you were indicating, we don't have any plan to uh, compete with the Workdays or the SAPs or uh, PeopleSoft out there. Our our whole philosophy is. Let's figure out how we complement what they do, um, and give, like Frank said yesterday, and I love what he said. Let's give, let's give our customers choices. Let's give them good choices that they can, they can um, have a good choice of what they want to do. Okay, so you're an HR pro. So let's. Uh, many people in our audience have the same question that you've been asked nine times today. Yep. You're not competing with the the transaction component that is Workday. You don't go to ServiceNow to to change my you know data about my Self, right? but we could if you want to, though. Okay, so we could be that front end. So I mean, again, that's ultimately. So you start there. You start, that, yeah, sure. And that makes sense. Yeah. Go through service now. So every request. But we're not going to store is, is that is information. We're not. Right. We're not the system of record. You're not the system of record there. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But now let's flip it. So you're not going to go compete with with Workday. No. But if I'm Workday and I'm saying, wow, this company service now is doing really well. They're growing at 50 plus percent a year. They got this great market cap. Maybe I should start doing some of that stuff. Now, they could. Yeah. But they're not going to do the other things. <laughs> it's Salesforce, like Frank said the other day. Well, hey, I talk to Benioff all the time. You know, we're birds of a feather in a lot of ways. We're yeah. developing apps. They're developing apps. So yeah. a company like ServiceNow with a mar market TAM of 40 plus billion, mm -hmm. you're playing in a lot of places, especially when you have a platform that can do anything. That's right. So where do you see that all going? Well, I mean, in my view, when I look at what I want to provide HR leaders, I want to provide them out of the box a product that meets um, the majority of their needs um, in de delivering services to their employees. I And I want it to um, continue to, and, and we'll expand on this in future releases, look and feel um, the, a great user interface because it's all about the employee experience with HR. IT doesn't care about the employee experience. HR cares about the employee experience. So really, um, really working on that user interface and that experience and, and the workflows, for me, uh, the possibilities are limitless Tell in terms of what flows, we can do. That, that, this is, you know, the Workday is a comprehensive system, but optimizing workflows is interesting because there's so many different um, workflows in HR. So that that, kind of, that stands like the strategy. Just pick an, it's almost like IT in a sense. Pick a few critical workflows. Could be trendy. Hey, we got this is, new law comes out or... Mm -hmm. Well, onboarding, of course, is the big one that everybody's talking yep. about, right? So what are those yep. use cases? What are the key ones you guys are Oh, well, I mean, on? you have leave of um, absence is a, is a big use case. Every um, HR organization, uh, and, and it's, it's one that can be very sticky. It can also bleed into legal and, and other areas of the business. So leave, leave of absence, managing those um, leave of absence requests. Um, some basic ones that are easy, tuition reimbursement, employment verification, really standard that we that we yeah. will be offering out of the box to um, to um, our customers. Um, PTO requests, managing time off, those are all standard Yeah, so the low hanging fruit to you is just automation. Automation. And the other ones are just more, yep. let's rewire something or, mm -hmm. you know, could be exposure. That's right, yep. What percent of companies in your experience do performance reviews? I just want to ask you as an HR pro. Uh, <laughs> too many. <laughs> too many? Too many. So you think uh, it's uh, counterproductive? I, I think the, so this is another probably great reason why I joined this organization is um, uh, you know, Frank's and Shelley's philosophy on um, performance reviews. Um, it's not formal the way uh, we consider it formal or HR, many HR 
um, organizations do with you know the whole performance review and setting goals. He really believes that that um, that whole responsibility lives with the manager, and um, H HR is there to support the manager. And I love that philosophy. Um, but we have to, as a um, as we're developing our product, understand that um, un unfortunately many organizations <laughs> don't share um, Frank's uh, philosophy. Oh, okay, so you're saying that many organizations have the HR oh, function they, do the performance Oh, they reviews. do. I, I, Absolutely. I feel like a neophyte. I didn't know that. What? That's insane. Ab Absolutely. Why? Why would you have the HR department and it do is, the performance review? Well, and I and I don't necessarily I don't I don't agree with it. Um, but it, it absolutely I would oh, say well, in the majority of organizations, um, HR still manages the whole performance. Well, review. So the syntax, that, that, then the syntax, they have the structure and process, yep. which controls the behavior of the manager. So they could take I mean, a box. It's, it's a whole. It's they don't a, do the reviews. It's a machine. I think just no, they team. don't do the reviews, but they they set the schedule, and you must have your reviews done by this time, and you must um, establish oh, okay. your it's goals. It's like going to the dentist and, and get your teeth and, pulled. Yeah. I Basically, that's and, the way and then they're constantly pounding on managers when they don't get it done to get it done, get it done, get it done. I mean, that's that's the way it was in my previous company. No, no offense, but it just does. It's not. It doesn't work. Um, what, so what does what work? Frank do, what 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 Frank's philosophy um, and Shelley's philosophy is here, and that is. Um, uh, managers are responsible for the performance of their team, and you reward people for their performance. Yeah. Um, and then people it's like who the boat that comes in the last place. I mean, Sorry, no just, prize for you. Yeah. So I want to ask a question about systems of engagement versus systems of record, because this comes up a lot, and, and I, I look at it a little bit differently because I don't look at it from the HR perspective. I look at it from the da big data side. What's your view of it from an HR perspective? What is the definitions of those? Systems of engagement, systems of record, I can also imagine. So I look at it, and, and this, from, I, this is the, my philosophy when I was on the customer side. I wanted to create that one-stop shop where my employees um, could come, where they knew exactly. I took all the guesswork out for them. Here's where you come to do everything. Now, um, ultimately, they may be the, they may be interacting and engaging with a form and service now, and that was going to feed via an integration to our HRS IS system, which was Oracle. That's fine, but they don't need to know that. For them, I wanted to create that standard look and feel, standard um, system of engagement that was predictable for them, easy to use, and that's really what you want to provide employees. You want to make it easy so for them the to be an employee. That's the app. That's, that's the right. user interface, user experience. That's right. Flows and clicks. Yep. Click streams. Where all the information is ultimately stored is a, a whole different matter and not necessarily important to me other than I want to be able to integrate um, with those systems So easily. bad UI, bad UX, taking that to the next level means you don't get the data you need for the system's records. So the engagement data is pretty critical. Engagement is is absolutely critical if you want your your employees to use it. If it if it is a bad UI, if it isn't a good experience, they're going to go. I'm not going to use this, and they're going to um, they're going to the employees make themselves heard um, very loudly. Um, so they'll let you know if it's a bad experience. Um, so that creating that great system of engagement where it's easy to use and they know how to use it that's important. How about mobile? Um, as it relates specifically in HR context, that's the conversation we're having. Uh, are you happy with where, with where you are with mobile? Is there a lot more work to do there? Very happy with where we are, but um, as with everything, I think we can continue to um, enhance uh, what we offer. It's absolutely a necessity in HR. Um, as you think about where many of the um, employees make their um, benefit decisions, it's not at the office. Um, on their lunch break, it's at home with their um, with their families, and so um, they may be, you know, looking for information in a knowledge base or making a benefit selection um, on their mobile device at home, um, not at the office. So being able to provide that um, capability on a mobile or you know iPad device um, is very critical. So you guys talk a lot, lot about you know the affinity with Workday, mm -hmm. and of course I know Anil and Frank, you know, birds of a feather and, and friendly. But there's a lot of other HR platforms out there. Mm -hmm. you know, Oracle, uh, SAP, uh, many others. What about those? Uh, we also, so um, right now, um, we're focusing just because the market, it, there's a lot of shift to, and interest in Workday. So it's cloud. It's cloud, <laughs> yeah. And But other the other ones are also coming up with, they have cloud as Success well. Success factors yeah. of cloud. Yeah, so. Um, 
So with uh, Geneva, we'll have a two-way integration with, um, with Workday to make that um, easier for our, um, our uh, customers. Mm -hmm. But then we'll be focusing on additional out-of-the-box integrations with those other HRIS systems as well. So does it have to be cloud-based? Uh, I mean, everybody's cloud now, right? Everybody I mean, is. You just I mean, like it better because your mm -hmm. clients, this is part of the mantra. It's easier. Right? It's easier for you, it's easier for the mm -hmm. customers. But it's it more doesn't satisfaction. have to be. Okay. Yeah. This is a big... So what's your goals now that you're in there, get your running shoes on, um, three feet in a cloud of dust, making things happen, you got some teammates to support you, service now. Yep. What's next, what's, what's, what are you going to work on? What's your plan? Um, well, <coughs> we're, still, we're still not known enough um, in the HR industry as um, a trusted uh, platform in HR, so we've got our work cut out for us there. And so, um, you know, it is about what we're building in the product that's going to help us, but it's also going to help us getting out at um, HR Tech that's coming here, Mandalay Bay in October. We'll be here, um, other events, um, working with analysts as well to help them understand what we're doing. Um, and, and, and really, it's going to be about creating uh, more success uh, and a great customer base, so that you know this time next year, uh, I, I hope to you know be able to say you know we really are um, one of those um, vendors that HR looks to first, um, and not you know us trying to um, get in there um, to have the because I think once they do and once they um, look at what we have to offer, it's um, it's it's very intriguing for them. But we really want to be. Um, you know, at top of their mind. So it sounds like your strategy then is to say, hey, you know what, you big, make all the big decisions, we're going to come in, create some value, pretty nimble, pretty agile, land and expand, and if that grows, it grows, and not really mutually exclusive to some other platform. No. And, and we absolutely are concentrating right now on um, where um, we are very successful. So we have a lot of great customers already on the IT side, so they all have HR departments. So um, uh, we're absolutely um, focused there in 2015, but beyond, we really want to expand uh, and be first. Okay, Jay, well we'll keep in track and we'll be following you. If you need any help, let us know. We always roll out the Cube to HR TechCon in, uh, in October. This is the Cube. We are live here in Las Vegas, uh, extracting the ceiling from the noise, sharing that with you. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break with our next guest. Stay tuned. Awesome.